Hello and welcome to Learning in Technology. My name is Frank and I'm glad you're here. This channel is all about how we can use technology to become better lifelong learners, better students, better teachers, and I hope that's interesting for you. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on all of the fun in the future. All the cool kids subscribe, like, and share things from this channel, and you do want to be a cool kid, right? So do you do the same, like, subscribe, and share. Anyways, today we're going to take a look at one of the favorite topics I seem to cover here, the Microsoft Whiteboard in Microsoft Teams. It seems like my most popular videos are those where I demonstrate how to use electronic whiteboard tools, especially the Microsoft Whiteboard. Everything on this particular video will apply to the Microsoft Whiteboard, but it'll also apply to all of the other different whiteboards out there. So, Microsoft Whiteboard videos, here's another one. In this video though, I won't be talking about the software portion of it, I'll be helping you to decide what might be the best hardware choice for you. As with most choices, the hardware you already have is probably a great place to start, and for many of you, you might already have what you need. You just need to know how to use it with the Microsoft Whiteboard. Or maybe you want to go out and buy something new because that's always fun too. So stick around and I'll show you three different ways to use the Microsoft Whiteboard with specific hardware. Now, the first question I have to ask you is, can you draw with a mouse? Now, personally, I struggle to draw, period, but I definitely cannot draw with a mouse. And if I try to write something like text on an electronic whiteboard using the mouse, well, students will fail. I will actually cause more harm than good if I try to write on the electronic whiteboard with a mouse. So full disclosure, I'm not perfect even with a pen, but a pen beats a mouse a hundred times. So when I draw with a pen, I guess I have to specify what type of pen I'm referring to. In this video, we'll talk about three different pens. We'll actually talk about four, but we'll talk about three specifically. First, I have a special pen that works with a Wacom tablet. Second, I have a special pen that works with an iPad. It's called a pencil, okay? And then third, I have a special pen that works with the Microsoft Surface. So I have the three different types of pens that I use. The one that requires a little extra attention when it comes to these pens is the iPad because not all iPads will allow you to use the pencil or this pen to write on them. So if your device, if so if the iPad's your device of choice, make sure to check. I'll address that in a few moments. I have a fourth pen, okay? So let's start with the device I personally like to use the most. It's also the least expensive if you're buying new. For example, if you don't have an iPad or a Surface. That device is a Wacom tablet, okay? And I've had mine for many, many years. I think somewhere in the neighborhood, of 15 to 20 years. That's a long time. Uh, a long time to still not know how to draw. But anyways, this device is super easy to use. My artistic ability aside, this device is very easy to use because all you need to do is plug it into the USB port on a Mac or a PC and it magically works. Not Harry Potter magic, but more of a USB auto detection magic that's built into the operating system. So the idea is that this surface here Every position on this uh, tablet here translates to an electronic position on the screen of your computer. So when I touch on here, the same location on my screen will all of, all of a sudden detect that there's a pen there. And so if you draw on the screen, you draw on the tablet here and you wind up drawing on the screen, it's a great choice. And it does take a slight amount of practice to have your hand on the surface of a tablet and then your eyes looking at the computer. But you'd be surprised. Uh, you, you get really adapted to it. People are very adaptable to that. And it, it, very quickly you start making this, you know, I draw here, I see there kind of connection, right? You start making that. We adapt to that type of connection very easily. Now, if I did have one complaint about the Wacom tablet, it would be that it doesn't always calibrate 100% to the screen. Sometimes you have to sort of relocate and figure out where the pen is on the screen a little bit. It's pretty easy though. That's, uh, that's a very easy thing to adapt to. So the Wacom tablet, one of my favorites. Now, of course, we also have our lovely iPad solution, okay? So if you, now on this channel, I actually have a whole video on how I can use the iPad as a tablet using screen mirroring or screen sharing. So what I can do is I can use the mirrored screen. It's really handy if I also wanna put iPad apps into a meeting. So I can do, you know, if I'm remote teaching and I want to use an iPad app, show that in a Teams meeting, that's easy to do. And I have another video on that. Um, but if you want to use it as a whiteboard only, there's an easier way to do that. 
First, you need to ensure that your iPad supports the Apple Pencil. If it doesn't, there are some third-party pens that might work with your model of iPad. The idea is to test it in advance. You might not be able to use Microsoft Whiteboard. You might have to use the application that's supported by the pen. But if you are using this and you have one that supports the pen, the best and easiest way to do that is you join the Teams meeting twice. So here I have a regular meeting. This is myself and this is Diana Prince, Wonder Woman. So we have a meeting here. We have all the regular things. We can have chat and so on and so forth. Let's just bring over my iPad. So here I am on Teams on my iPad. And you'll notice that it says there's a meeting in progress. Do I want to join on this device? So I'll click join on my iPad. And this is where it'll ask me whether I want to add this device or whether I want to transfer the device. And just so you know, the mouse here is on my computer. I'm using my stylus on my computer. So I'm going to add this device. And now I'm adding my iPad to the meeting. So it still shows a meeting between myself and Diane. But if I go to my iPad and I choose the sharing option, I can share the screen. So now you'll see that I have the meeting, but I've, I've actually started presenting my screen. So this is actually my iPad screen. I'll show you. If I go out of here, you'll see that on the screen, you see my iPad screen. If I go into my whiteboard here, bring up the whiteboard, and now everything I'm doing on the whiteboard, everything I'm drawing on the whiteboard on the iPad, this is my iPad. Everything here is going to show up on the screen here. Again, all the same stuff that you would expect from the whiteboard. Um, you can also check out my other video on how to use the iPad as a whiteboard via screen sharing, except that video was done a long time ago and it's not nearly as nice as this one. Now, are we done yet? No, not by a long shot. I said there were three ways and I mean it. So the third way is using the Microsoft Surface. Now, to be fair, it could be any touchscreen laptop I just happen to use a Surface myself. And in this case, there's no need at all to, to do anything. You don't have to join the meeting a second time. You can just join the meeting from your Surface. You can just open up the Whiteboard app, share it out, start using the screen using your Surface Pen, right? You can just run it from the Surface itself and then share out the Whiteboard. Uh, uh, then you use the Surface Pen you're drawing on there. You're good to go. Of course, if you lose the Surface Pen, it pretty much costs as much to replace this pen as it would cost to buy a brand new Wacom tablet. A friend told me that. Never happened to me, but a friend of mine told me that. It works very well, but it's also the most expensive solution unless you already have a, a Surface or some other touch screen, uh, screen device already. Now, did I say three ways? Well, there's more. I just can't show them all here because I don't own every device under the sun unless you ask my wife, she's pretty convinced that I do. Specifically, I don't have an Android tablet, or at least not a, a new one. So I can't show it on there, but it should work just the same as Teams running on Windows. It runs, Teams runs on Windows, it runs on Mac, iOS devices, Android devices, Linux. It runs from the web. I expect an Xbox version soon enough, which actually might be a good idea. I'm gonna try that. So maybe next time I'll try running Teams on the Xbox. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'm really glad to have you here. Thank you again. Subscribe, like, make sure that you're, you're sharing out this with other people that can use this as well. Here are some other videos on the channel. And also, try these tips on your own. Try them out. Let me know how they work for you. Comment down below. We'll see you in the next videos.